welcome to the Property Unleashed podcast with me, your host, Mark Fitzgerald. It's fantastic to have you joining me here today. So today I have another special guest. I like getting the guests in. I like seeing people that are smashing it out there, that are building and growing their property businesses. And today I am joined by Matt Fletcher from uh, Evo Star Property. Great to have you on the show, Matt. How are you today? Great, Mark. Thanks very much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. No problem. So Matt himself has a lettings and management business in the South Yorkshire area. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Good, 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 good. good. I should have done my homework on that one. Um, and he's been growing that and building that. He also now is moving into the commercial side of property and the service accommodation side, which is where our paths have crossed. But for people who do not know you, Matt, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please, mate? Mm, yeah, of course. Um so I, I have always had a fascination with uh, computers and problem solving from a very young age. And I basically progressed with that through school. I took every opportunity to tinker with computers, you know, um, did my A-levels in computing and took it on further to a software engineering degree. Uh, I graduated from that. Happy as Larry, you know, I couldn't wait to get going. And I... I graduated at a time, I don't know if you remember this, but there was something called the dot-com bubble mm -hmm. uh, and a subsequent crash. So this is when all the tech companies, uh, anyone with a website really, uh, and a flashy website, but no real business model, you know, investors poured into it. It was a huge speculative bubble, basically. And that all came crashing down right at the time when I graduated. Perfect, you know, but perfect. <laughs> so I was desperate to get going. You know, I was applying to jobs. I had a stack of uh, print offs. I, I print off every job I applied to. I had a stack like that, showing my parents, you know, look, this is what I'm doing. I'm working every day to try and get, you know, a job in this field. Uh, I was getting no bites. You know, um, companies were, didn't want someone with no experience uh, because they were all shedding employees. They weren't, you know, they were getting rid of them. Um, so I said, well, I basically got sick of this. I, I wanted to get going as fast as I could. And I said, you know, the next job, wherever it is in the country that comes up, I'm just going to apply everywhere. You know, I was applying to like, I'm based in the Midlands. I was applying to Edinburgh, you know, Cumbria, Sussex, wherever it was. And uh, someone took a chance and offered me an interview. And it was right down on the South Coast. So off I went, packed my bags. <laughs> off I went to start my career down there. Nice. Uh, and, and cracked on. I really, really enjoyed it. Learned a lot. Um, did six years down there before I uh, probably got a little bit homesick and moved back. But um, basically progressed that career, took every opportunity I could. If I ever felt like I was hitting a glass ceiling or there's no way to progress in that role, then I would be looking for a new role, basically, and uh, changing jobs and kind of working my way up that career ladder, as, as you know from your past. Um, so did that for sort of 10 years. Um, kind of felt like I'd reached the glass ceiling again. Uh, and so at that point, I took a step into contracting, which is basically uh, where you will come into a company and work with them for a period of time, might be three months, might be three years on a long project. Uh, and, and so I worked really hard just to be the best kind of developer that I could possibly be in that, in that career. Um, did that for another 10 years until I reached the point where you know, I, I loved the problem solving aspect of it. I loved building something that wasn't there before, you know, something that um, was maintainable. It was scalable. It was um, documented. It was efficient, um, you know, performant, and it met the requirements. And I'd love doing that. But as you know, thing, other things come into it. Corporate politics gets tedious, team infighting. Uh, all these bits around the edge where you're like, you put up with it because you enjoy the core part of the job. But then something kind of switched whereby I, I, it was starting to get repetitive, basically. So I'd, I'd done this problem before. I'd solved this business solution. It was just doing it in another way. And it lost its appeal at that point, but almost like a switch, really. So I, I'd felt like I'd achieved everything in that career that I wanted to. And... Um, started looking at business books, reading business books, listening to podcasts like mad every day. So, so I had a sort of three hour commute at one point, three hour round trip. I had a podcast after podcast going. 
and I was just honing in on what I wanted to do next. And eventually I uh, landed on property. So I started going into the property podcast and the property books. And I had I had already had property in the background at this point, just as a kind of pension, because my pension options were never brilliant with um, just happened to not be great with uh, contracting and, and the jobs I picked. Um, but like you say, like you've said before, you don't know what you don't know. You know, I was I had a property sitting there in the background on a repayment mortgage, just ticking along. I thought you needed to save up a deposit every time before you could progress in that career, you know. And so this, this learning just opened up my eyes to the possibilities of, you know, all the different strategies you can do in property. It, it was amazing. I really uh, got into that. And uh, so the next the next thing really was just to decide how to build this up alongside a software. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so that was the next thing sort of said to the wife look this is what i'm think, thinking of doing and uh she was on board luckily <laughs> she got it straight away and um, so yeah so we, we looked at the strategies from that point on we, we decided we, we kind of evaluated each one for example we looked at deal sourcing and with deal sourcing as you know i felt there was a lot of upfront work you have to do there without mm-hmm. necessarily having a successful outcome. So you can you can end up doing a lot of work and maybe the deal will fall through and you won't get paid. Um, it's kind of lumpy money, whereas I, I was thinking building a repetitive cash flow that you could forecast out for sort of three to five years made a lot more sense. So that's the model we ended up going after. We basically set about doing some rent to rent training and um, starting with the rent to HMO model. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So it's got you all the way into property. And I, I completely resonate with you. When you work for other people, you're sort of pigeonholed into what you're doing, aren't you? Uh, and it very much feels like, you know, you want to get more creative. Why? Because you learn, you know, you, you learn what works, you learn how things work and you know how you can make things better. But in a lot of uh, other people's businesses, you get stuck. Uh, I certainly was stuck. I had all of these sort of ideas. Now, some of them were probably crazy ideas. But they wouldn't even listen to the ideas. And a lot of them were because of the experience, because of where you are. So I'm totally with you on that one. And it's nice to sort of break free from that and be able to do something for yourself, ways you can put those ideas and you can try them out. And if they don't work, they don't work. But it's it's basically having that freedom, isn't it, to, to do that sort of thing. And I know that you've now recently just transitioned everything. Now you are full time in property, aren't you? Correct. Yeah. So that's. This year, I went I went part time down to sort of half the week, which was an amazing feeling because I'd been context switching constantly for what felt like years. So, you know, you've obviously got your your job going on. Mm -hmm. Most most of my work uh, in recent years has been remote. So that's fine. You know, you can work from your own office and in your own time pretty much. Um, But there's a, a hell of a lot of context switching. So it would be, you know. Maybe I haven't approached this in the way that many people do. I kind of employed people to work with me while I still had my um, full-time career. Most people, or many people, tend to replace their income and then build the business. I was kind of doing both in parallel. So, you know, I was having daily team calls with with you know the software, and I have a daily team call with my team, and I'd get problems coming in about you know this HMO or whatever, and I say, well, this is what needs to happen over there. And it was just a lot of context switching, which was getting a little draining after a while. So to, to have that, uh, to go to part time, half the week I could focus on one, half the week I could focus on the property it was great. And then, like you say, uh, became full time this year. And yeah, I can just flat out focus on property, which is just a, an amazing feeling. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it is. I mean, property's not a nine to five unless you make it a nine to five job so there are times i mean there's, there's anti-social hours don't get me wrong as well there are things you know can, that can happen at any time but it's not per se you have to clock on at nine o'clock you have to work till five o'clock sometimes when things are difficult you wish it was <laughs> <laughs> in general you know uh you can you can sort of dictate your own hours and stuff can't you particularly if you've got a team as well uh and i do love the fact of being able to help and support people but i can imagine as well if you're you know you're doing your computer side of things and then you're doing your property and it's trying to put those hats on 
simultaneously, it's got to be very, very tricky and very, very difficult to do. So you, you've been managing and looking after and building up the uh, HMO properties and, and, and that side of the business. And of course, you know, our, our paths crossed when you decided then that you wanted to move into the short term rental. Uh, sector as well and start adding that to your uh, your bucket and i always like to say i like to have a bucket with lots of little taps just pouring revenue streams in um, and i completely understand the deal source inside of it as well because i mean i get so many deals even now coming across my desk that i, I can't do them all and I, I obviously i'm always asking if anybody's interested or anybody's looking for any particular deals and I always thought, well, I could I could actually make a business out of this. But again, there's a lot more to it than just saying, oh, here's a deal. Here's an investor. Happy days. You've, you've got all the running around to do. Then it falls out of bed. People change their minds and all of those sort of things. So I like the residual income that you can get on a month on month uh, level. So, of course, you know, you, you, you're transitioning to SA. You've got a bit of commercial that you're looking at and things like that. Now, what made you want to go into the short term rental space? So. It was very deliberate. I, I always knew that SA was a great strategy. Um, I've stayed in many SAs myself, um, but it's. I always knew it was a noisy business. So there's a lot of moving parts. And you, if you want to succeed in this, I believe when you're starting out, you live or die by your reviews and your customer service in effect. So you, you, I feel like you want to be smashing this out of the park when you do this, okay, or don't bother because you know there's competition it's, i guess that's kind of me generally in life i don't want to do anything half-assed it's got to be done to the best of my ability or, or don't do it and so <clears throat> growing sa alongside all the other things i felt like was a step too far however because uh, like we we're talking about i went full-time in property i now i could i can get away i can do whatever i need to do at any time to make sure that we can smash it out of the park basically so build a, build a great SA business and give it the focus it needs to to grow. Um, so that was the reason. It, it was a deliberate reason to to wait, basically, until the time was right. And, and the time was right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, I think so as well. I mean, I, I'm exactly the same. It was, you know, get the get the rent to rent side of it with the HMOs. I, I like the yeah. HMOs. They're, they're quite steady away. Yeah, there's problems, but you can put systems and processes in place for most of those things. Uh, and I always thought, well, service accommodation, it is busier. It is a busier business. But of course, there's potentially more of the upside on what you can earn as well. So they're, they're great strategies. But I always say to anybody starting out, and if you are looking at starting out and listening to this or watching this, it is pick one, give it everything you've got, build that up, systemize that, and then move on to the next one if you choose to. Some people don't, some people do. Um, my, I came into the service accommodation was basically because there was a block of units that had three properties in it. And I was a bit like, well, I, they're single lets. I can't do anything with those. So it's got to be SA or nothing. So it was a choice of this is a really great opportunity that we can systemize and we can we can have it there. So why not? Uh, and then, of course, I was buying my own single lets and they just, well, interest rates went through the roof right at the wrong moment pulled all of my uh, mortgages out so it's a case of the only way to make these to work and stack is to do service accommodation and they've done all right with contractors in so yeah i like that the diversification is there and things now of course you came and joined us at the uh, ultimate sa training program i've got to ask you about that of course yeah. uh, which, is, which is run by graham graham linley who's our resident uh, SA expert. And uh, he certainly is the expert in that field, isn't he? He really is, yeah. He knows this model inside out. And he scaled it to such a level that there's nothing he doesn't know about running that business. So, yeah, what a fantastic guy to lead the training. Yeah. So, I mean, just uh, obviously for your feedback and, and stuff like that, You've obviously gone through the training, which uh, for people that don't know is is a vi video training that basically takes you from knowing nothing to being able to systemize and scale a you know six figure and above service accommodation business. And of course, Graham is on the weekly or weekly sorry the monthly calls. We have a couple of calls every month as well. So, how have you found uh, you know going through the training? Because now you obviously you've got three service accommodation units, haven't you? Since you know starting with us, you've got those set up. You've got. You know, 75% occupancy, basically, uh, on average there. You've got 10 out of 10 reviews. Has has joining the, the training and obviously being guided by Graham, has that really, really helped you? Yeah, 100%. It, it was exactly what I was looking for, basically. So 
whenever I attempt to do something, like I say, it's never going to be a flash in the pan. I'm going to do this properly and it's going to be a business and it's not going to be running around, you know, flapping, making calls, things are going to get, the ball's going to get dropped, basically. I'm not interested in doing that approach. And, and Graham, uh, and your training, basically, your training program is all built around that. So it's in the name, you know, it's about scaling this business. But, mm. you know, Graham's done it, you've done it. It's it's not about doing it once, you know, and remembering all the lockbox numbers and, and you know, remembering all the guests' name. You've got to have your systems in place if you're going to do this properly. And maybe I was a bit negative earlier saying it's a noisy business. Yes, it's noisy, but there's no reason why you can't systemize all this. You know, it doesn't all have to be done by yourself. You know, you get your team in place, you build it up. And actually, at the minute, it, it's not very noisy for me at all. I'd say my HMOs are noisier um, because we've got some longer stays in at the minute. And, you know, they're happy and they're getting a great service. So, um, so yeah, it, it's all about systemizing and the training uh, really pushes you in that direction to build it as a sustainable business. Yeah. I, I saw on a few of the coaching calls as well, you were obviously giving us updates as to, you know, sorting out the properties and getting them up and running and things. And Graham does actually hold you all accountable to getting them set up, getting them on the, on the systems as quickly as possible, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like having a mentor. So yeah. Graham will hold you accountable. If you say you're going to do something, um, you know, whatever it might be, we'll, we'll say, well, why can't you do that tomorrow? You know, what's holding you back? You know, why are you setting this for two weeks' time? And you'll say, well, well, I did it because I need to go and buy the stuff. Well, then, you know, go and do it now or send someone to do it. You know, he, he'll have, hold you accountable. And, that, and that's a great thing because it makes you it makes you reconsider. You know, you could do this faster. You could be generating revenue faster. You know, you could be filling your pipeline while you're doing that. You know, it's no good focusing on this, setting up this one unit if you're neglecting your pipeline you know, what you're going to do when that unit's online, well, then you're going to have to start looking for units. So you already, you know, you get behind if you don't pay attention to that pipeline. So, yeah, I'd say the accountability calls are fantastic. So everyone comes in with an open mind. Everyone's really friendly and is uh, looking forward to hearing what each other have been up to. And maybe suggesting, like, the, the participants suggest to each other, you know, oh, I, I've hit that problem. Why don't you think about doing this? Or, or this is what we did. Maybe that'll work for you. Um, so I really like that about the course. It's a great little community as well. And that, that's something that's very, very important to us. And of course, you guys make the community what it is as well. It's getting in there. It's it's the people that are a few steps ahead of you that will, will turn around yeah. and say, yeah, we had that. And this is what we, and like you just said then, it works out really, really well. And as you say, once you've so, so systemized, Mm -hmm. what you're doing, how you're looking at uh, approaching your business. And I, I love the fact that you've come in and you've sort of had the long game approach. So a lot of people, like you say, they just want to get their first unit. Then they forget everything else while they're setting that unit up. And it really is a case of not everybody's got a budget to be able to get other people to do things. So everybody does start from a different starting point, which yes. is fair enough. I mean, if you look at Ellie, who's smashing it out there with the property she's got, but every time I keep seeing her, she's got a paintbrush in her hat. Yeah. But that's because that's where she is with her budget and everything. And that's fair enough, but it's really not the best use of her time. She would actually, it would be better time just get paying a painter to do that. You'll make the money back once the, the uh, properties are operational and be getting out there to get some more properties, isn't it? It is. It is. And, and I understand you've got to be in the trenches sometimes. You know, yeah. I, that's that's what I did with the rent to HMOs. You know, I was there whatever time of day it was. Come on, let's go. We've got to get this room ready. If that means painting it tonight, then that's what we're doing. If that means running around, buying some furniture and putting it in, that's what you've got to do when you're starting out. That You've got to then, as you progress, resist that temptation because you, you're capable of doing it. You know you could sort that problem out in you know half a day or whatever but that half a day you spent paying that room like you say will be better spent uh, talking to landlords talking to leads whatever it might be building your business mm. so you've got to it's difficult you know as an entrepreneur you, you've got to resist that urge haven't you to do the i guess what they call the low value low revenue value tasks and, and go after the income generating tasks where you are where, where you should be focusing really as, as the owner Definitely. 
I've done it. I've done the same thing. The first few properties I got, they were pretty good, but they needed a lick of paint. So I always thought to myself, well, what's the quickest way I can do this? Because a painter can go in there and he was saying it'll take three days and all of that. Mm. And I thought it won't. We can do this in a day. So I, I can roll for Britain. I just can't cut in. I, I can't yeah. cut in the tricky part, but I'll roll all day long. So I used to hire a decorator and say to him, I'm going to roll. All I want you to do is follow me. Just cut everything in. Uh, and we used to I used to get um, we used to go in there and we used to blitz it. But again, I got to the point where I had about five properties by that time, six properties coming on. And it was just like, I can't keep doing this. This isn't the best use of my time anymore. Uh, but again, it's it's having that sort of knowledge to be able or somebody there or a mentor or a coach to say, Mark, get your head out of the trenches now. Put your head up. You, you, you're you above, not above the work, I, I, you know, no, I don't no. put anybody down. but you're above doing that in your business. You should be getting some. You should be out there getting and negotiating the deals. Um, but it is difficult. So sometimes to have that sort of nudge to just have the obvious pointed out to you, because when you're in the trenches, it's very difficult to see out of it, isn't it? 100%. 100%. Yeah. It, it, like you say, it's not that it's anything's beneath you. It's that if you know, if you're serious about growing this business, you can't be spending your days painting walls. Otherwise, you're going to spin your wheels and you'll be stuck in, in, that, in that area for a long time. So, yeah, it's all about kind of trying to zoom out as soon as you can, really um to to build that business out on scale nice and if there was one thing uh, i'll ask this before we move on uh, if there was one thing from the training that you've gone through and everything that really stood out for you uh what, what would that be uh so what well, i'm really a detail oriented person so when someone's explaining something to me already in my head it's operating like 100 miles an hour I'm thinking well yeah but what about x y z you know the detail is all there okay so so um, Graham and you go into great detail about every aspect of you know, the business, you know, the, it, holding your hand through the whole lot, basically. Um, so everything is there. You need to progress. OK, so all Graham's knowledge is laid out in these videos, along with, um, you know, the accompanying whatever it might be, calculators and things. There's no reason why you you cannot do this course. and You, you cannot do this. Anyone can do this. OK, all you've got to do is execute what's what's there basically it's as simple as that that's it Let's take action it's all right learning anything and you you've taken plenty of action so i like to take my hat i would take my hat off but my hair's still gray <laughs> uh, i like to take my hat off to you because it is just follow and the people that are successful on the training course are the ones that just take the action aren't they they're the ones that are pushing themselves out there and as we say you only fail when you stop because there's plenty of people out there at the moment that need your help, that need support, that need this service that you can do with short term rentals or HMOs or anything. There's a whole host in, in every area. There's no one area works better than others. I mean, in our group, we've got people all across the country, haven't we? All over the place that are doing yeah. deals, that are building businesses. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I instinctively thought that my area wouldn't be great for SA because it's not a tourist location. Um, so you would think, well, maybe you'll get some people visiting family. But but no, when I actually did the research piece, you know, there's lots of hotels there. There's lots of businesses here. You know, people work away from home in the week. They need accommodation. So don't assume that it doesn't work in your area just because you're not in a tourist like seaside resort or something like this. And you probably find that your competition actually might be lower because of that reason. Maybe people think it's not going to work there and you can smash it out of the park and become the best in your area. So, um, yeah, fantastic. That's good advice. Good advice. You should have your own podcast, you know. <laughs> um, so, I know this is the first podcast I've ever done. Oh, well, you're doing ever so well. No, it's good. It's good to have you on. We've been trying to do this for a little while, haven't we? So yeah. it's been good. So what's the sort of future for, for, for your good self? What are you looking at um, doing? How big do you want to be? Is that, you know, what's what, what's your plans? Yeah, so I'm, I'm always thinking of the long term. I, I would like to build up my, my sort of mid to long term goal is to move into commercial to residential conversions. I find that really interesting. I've seen some there, they've been done and I could recognize how they might have been done better. Maybe reconfiguring them might have made them more lucrative or providing a better class of conversion might have helped in that particular area. So that's one goal, get, getting to that. And <clears throat> the ultimate goal would probably to, to be to build something from scratch, like so developments. Now, 
everything I've seen about developments is it can make or break you. And it, some of it sounds like hell, but it would be nice to just, you know, leave that legacy maybe one day, you know, there was nothing there. And now there you go. There's there's a building there that, that we've created. So maybe right. that's a, far, a very far away goal, that one. No, I like that. Yeah, because I suppose it is a legacy piece that you put a building there. Mm. I've, do you know what? I've never ever thought of it like that. When you go back and look at all of these old buildings and they say it was built, you know, in 1901 mm. and things. I've never thought that whoever built that has actually made a mark, so to speak, because yeah. whilst that building is still here and operational, they've left a little legacy piece. I like that. Now you've got me intrigued yeah. and interested in building something. <laughs> you, can little, uh, you can have a little Platt Fitzgerald Towers, you know, in there that lasts for hundreds of years, you know. There you go. I like that. Fitzgerald Towers. Let me write that one down. I tell you, hey, we could be on to we'll, we'll build a village. Let's build a village. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're active at the moment. I always, as I say, take my hat off to people that uh, have stayed the, 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 the game, so to speak, have stayed in the game, have stayed pushing themselves forward. You're, um, you know, you're being very active in the group and the community, which is great. You've had your head down. You've been a busy man as well. You've got potential deals lined up in the pipeline as well, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, we're looking at um, a JV uh, and doing another unit in the next sort of, two, three weeks, which would be great to build that out. Um, and, and once you've done a JV with someone and they're happy, that obviously is great is great for your reputation because uh, I've done JVs in the past, not, not SA, but, you know, often it leads to doing bigger things in the future with that same person or other people. You know, you did what you say you were, you were going to do and it's all working as you said it would. So great, why not let's do some other things. So, yeah, I'm really excited to get that over the line. Uh, and, and scale from there. And how, how long did it take you to get your first SA units? You got three, didn't you? Yeah, I I think it was probably just fortunate timing. Um, there's nothing special I did, I would say, over anyone else. Uh, it was just reaching out to, you know, as, as the training helps you with, reaching out to the right type of uh, property, basically. Mm -hmm. So these particular properties look like they fit the bill in this area. And they ticked all the boxes I was looking for for my guest type. So um, so it just happened to work out. And that's not to say there weren't challenges. I mean, it didn't look like it was going to happen for quite a, uh, a lot of that. There was a lot of backwards and forwards with contracts. And uh, I wanted to make sure it was operating in the correct fashion, you know, and all above board. Um, so I, you know, I wouldn't really do this without signing the right contracts. I wouldn't advise that at all. So in the end, we managed to, you know, keep it going, kick it over the line. And yeah, when we got the keys, it was just all hands to the pump. Let's, you know, let's get this online now, um, which my wife loved because I basically handed it over to her and, you know, as right, you're here, you're the operations manager, off, you know, off you go. <laughs> Happy days. So yeah. she was there watching it. Well, we do we do videos and things like that as well, don't we? And of course, you had all the contracts at your disposal, which you can tweak yeah. and, and use to your heart's content. But you um, you basically focused. I mean, some people will say, "Well, I can't take three properties on. How can I handle that?" You basically just systematically said, "Right, just one at a time. Let's go through these. Let's hit them all, and then one at a time, we'll get them all online as well, wasn't it?" Yeah, it was. It was. It was a risk. Okay, is a risk, and uh, I'm usually pretty risk averse. On the risk averse scale, I'm you know pretty risk averse. But all the research we did led to the conclusion that this was the right thing to do. Having multiple units helps from a booking point of view. So if you know if you need to juggle bookings around, having three identical units is ideal because you'll not be letting someone down if you need to move them, whatever that might be, a maintenance problem or you know, God forbid, you shouldn't have the double booking. But if something were to go wrong or whatever, you know, you could move someone around. So it helps from that, from a long term vision point of view. Well, I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't have taken one unit and built from there. Uh, it, it was a risk and it was a leap and it's not for everyone. Um, you know, what, one unit is a step in the right direction, a great step. So, you know. Well, I think you take what you can. Yeah. I, I think, you know, if you get one unit, happy days. But if you get three units, it's seriously happy days. Obviously, it's three three amounts of work. But it's just, again, at the end of the day, when, you, when you're looking at starting your, your service accommodation business, you want more than three or four or five units anyway. 
So, you know, if you can find, you know, one person to work with, take three units on or, or anything like that, then I would just say, all you've got to do is just know what you're doing and then just systematically go through it. And of course, I know um, from from listening to what you were saying when you were taking them on, you know, you knew the steps that you wanted to take. You asked any questions about anything there, but it was really, let's just take these on one at a time, get through this. And then, like you say now, um, and it is easier than you expect. It, 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 it can be very busy. And I think it depends on how you manage your unit. So if you're looking at like weekend bookings, midweek bookings and all of that, then it is busy. It is a lot, a lot busier, a lot noisier. Mm. I tend to just work with contractors as much as possible, which book it out for a couple of weeks or three weeks or four weeks or six months uh, and those sort of things. And that sort I mean, we're in a similar area at the end of the day. And that sort of suits the area as well. Um, but like you say, just touching back onto that, it's not as noisy as you thought it was once once you've got those systems in place, is it? That's right. Yeah. And the training will help you with this. So Graham's obviously been through a load of product, a load of software systems and products and methodologies he's had to go through. He's had to learn the hard way to build his business. So why not just take his advice and build on save save your time and energy and build on what he's done? Yeah. You know? If, the, if, the, if these products are working for him and he is however many hundred units, they'll work for you. So, you know, just take that and get on with it. And, and that's that's what we did, basically. So we get the software in place. It wasn't all at once. You, you know, you've got to be realistic. You can't do everything at once. OK, so get it up and running, you know, maybe then get your, your channel, channel manager up and running, get your photography spot on, you know, get your description spot on and get your pricing spot on. You're not all going to do that in one day, but you can you can plan to do that within, you know, a week or two, uh, even as even if you're busy. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it's all there. Just 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 crack on base. And, let, and let's not forget as well, we're in many uh, of these uh, deals, we're helping a landlord. So we're taking our property, we're keeping it in top condition, way over and above probably what a tenant would. It will probably be dilapidated after a long tenancy, whereas we're going to keep it in great condition. We're going to touch up the paintwork, replace bits, keep it all immaculate because we want the great guest experience. So mm. that that helps the landlord. They, their asset is kept in top condition. So, you know, you're not, it's not they're doing you a favor. You're doing them a favor, really, in a way. Yeah, yeah. And how did you feel when you started getting your first bookings? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it, it kicked off pretty much straight away. Um, we got a lot, of, a lot of business through the OTAs, a few long stays. So we had some people visiting from abroad. Um, we had American family, Saudi Arabian family. Um, and yeah, we just we just did whatever we needed to. So when we discovered they they didn't really speak English, we translated everything to um, Arabic, basically. It translated all our welcome information and everything just to help them out with the local area. Um, and it's been really successful. We've had a lot of work bookings as well. So people working away in the week um, and repeat bookings. So they know they're going to have a nice day and everything will be there for them. So, um, yeah, really happy with the uh, with the bookings that have come in. We haven't really, although we 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 started a bit um, reaching out to reaching directly out to companies that are local and and others to say, you know, we can host your guys and here's they'll get a great service. They'll be able to eat and drink together, watch TV, wash their clothes if they need to, or cook a meal. We haven't really even pushed that piece. To, that push that piece of work very hard at the minute because the OTAs have been providing a, a lot of business. Um, now, you need to be careful with that. Obviously, you can't be relying on the OTAs long term in case you get booted off the platform for whatever reason. Or, you know, it's you've got to be diversified and get your direct bookings. But, um, but yeah, we've, we've seen great success just straight off the bat from, uh, from, from the OTAs. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That's always good. And one of the other questions I always like to ask people is uh, what made you want to come and join us? Because obviously, you know, the training environment, there's plenty of different training providers and things like that out there. We all do our own due diligence and homework on things. Um, but we're glad you did. But uh, yeah, what, what made you uh, what made you think that's the one for me? Yeah, so I'm I'm a details person. So it looked like the, well, the, the clues in the title business builder on the face of it. So that is attractive immediately. You're building a business. Great. I'd seen you speak at uh, the, on the pin circuit. 
I, I had the same uh, sort of values as you, you know, followed you on social media and listened to the podcast and things. So I knew that, you know, and anyone that's doing, if you're doing this training, it has to be of a certain caliber because that's the type of content that you do. You have a certain uh, standard and you don't drop below that. So anything you put your name to, I already know it's going to be um, a great standard. And then, yeah, just like you say, do a bit of due diligence. It looks good. Great. Let, let's do it. Happy days. Well, as I say, glad you did. I'm glad you're getting the results that you want from it as well. Um, so if you've listened to the podcast before, you know that I like to ask all my guests a little handful of questions, more because I'm interested. And sometimes I get some great answers and results. Uh, and it's like books and podcasts and all sorts of stuff that I can look up uh, and enjoy as well. So if that's all right with you, are you OK if I ask you a few of these questions? Yeah, of course. Cool, 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 cool. So what's the best advice you've been given? best advice i've been given if you're if you're just getting started i'd say the best advice is to um do one thing every day that moves you forward so so write down one thing every day that moves you forward that might be making a phone call to the agent uh, it might be doing a viewing it might be on right move or whatever software you're using it might be listening to a podcast anything that that moves you forward and then when you look back in a month or, or a year, you've done 365 days that have moved your business forward. Even when you've not felt motivated, you've still done it. You know, it's not hard to do one single thing a day. Um, so I'd say if, when you're starting out, that that would be the best piece of advice. Maybe I might sneak another one in here, which is yeah. once you're established, remember to resist the urge to delve into the minutiae. So try and zoom out and keep sight of your long-term strategic vision. That will pay dividends. No, I like that. That's good. That's very good. And it is very, very easy to get caught up, as we said before, in, in everything. So, yeah, one step at a time. And I believe the power of reviewing, you know, the last month, potentially, the last, if nothing else, you should review at the end of the year, your year, just to see how far you've come. And if you haven't moved then you're not taking the right steps. You're not doing the right things. You're not taking the right actions. But you should be a different person. Each and every year, there should be a different yeah. map. There should be a different mark. Because otherwise, if you're not growing, well, you're dying at the end of the day or you're just not moving yourself forward. So I love that. That's brilliant. Um, if you could sit down and have dinner with three people alive or dead, who would you like to sit down and have dinner with? One would be uh, Winston Churchill. So it took him 40 years to become prime minister i know he overcame depression he overcame anxiety he overcame a speech impediment we know him as an amazing orator he bloody mindedly practiced constantly uh, to get over that speech impediment which you wouldn't you wouldn't believe um and and he uh, i really admire when someone is courageous and persistent in the face of overwhelming odds so if you imagine like 1940, that must have been an incredibly uh, dark time. You know, um, Britain pretty much stood alone um, and lots of his party didn't like him. The opposition didn't like his warmongering and, and he was pretty much alone. But uh, yeah, I, I really admire that. So that would be one. I say Winston Churchill. Um, definitely Elon Musk. Huge fan of Elon Musk. So he's got a natural technical ability. He's basically a rocket scientist now and an expert in manufacturing. Um, not many CEOs would sleep on the assembly line to get the job done. In fact, yeah. I think that's amazing. Um, and, but also the way that he's hyper intelligent, but he can also articulate to non-technical people his vision, what, what his goals are. Um, and, and I love the fact that he does the iterative development thing. So he, he fails fast, you know, tries to learn everything he can as quick as he can and applies it to the next iteration uh so they're the they're two and, and the final one i'd say would be my granddad so he's passed away now he passed away when i was young but uh, he's he was an xraf pilot really gentle modest kind man um and he used to take the time to play chess with me when i was young um it, when you know when you're like seven or eight you make silly mistakes but in chess for example he, he used to encourage me not by letting me beat him outright he would just offer up a little um kind of 
piece or, or a, an opening that would teach me more about the game. Uh, just an in, a real intellectually, an intellectual and a patient grandfather. Just a lovely man. Yeah, I think that'd be amazing. Ah, oh, sounds like a really good table. That really good table. Yeah. Uh, just off topic, have you read the Elon Musk book by I, uh, Walter Isaacson? I've read the first one by Ashley Vance. I think it is. I'm I'm I'm, I'm crossing my fingers to get the latest one for Christmas, for a Christmas present. It's a beast. And, it's is a it? beast. But um, Walter Isaacson is he's wrote about Einstein. If if mm. if you are you know somebody who's who's done something in the world, he's wrote about loads of different people. He is the guy that you want to write a book about you. Yeah. So um, as soon as I saw that one, I have got. I haven't read it yet. I've got it. I'm going to start it after uh, the book I'm reading now. It's supposed to be really, really good. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I'd love to read that. So that's cool. That's cool. Do you have a top three a podcasts or go to sort of podcast that you enjoy? Yes. I, I used to spend like three hours in the car uh, every day, pretty much. So I'd listen. My tastes have changed over the time. I've listened to a hell of a lot of podcasts. But right now, it's obviously yours, Mark. I find that very motivational um, about mindset and, you know, getting things right. Uh, I listen to High Performance Podcast. I like that one. I think it's High Performance. Oh yeah, um, yeah. and uh, property entrepreneur. Obviously, yeah. that's that's a really Dan Hill's uh, podcast. I find that really inspiring. Brilliant. That's good. I like those, especially the first one. Uh, yeah. and do you have a top three books that you'd recommend to people? They don't have to be property books. They can be about anything that you like. Um, just yes, topic. definitely. There's one called Four Thousand Weeks. Uh, I think it's by Oliver Berkman. I think that's right. Um, I was bowled, bowled over by this book. This was just like a random purchase on Amazon that I saw and hadn't been recommended it at all. 4,000 weeks is basically our average time on this planet. Um, I know that sounds depressing, but when you start reading this book, it's every page is kind of laced with gold. I had to like stop. I had to almost read like a page or two, then stop and digest. You know, it, it was, um, it talks a great deal about fulfillment, focus, um, not neglecting the present in hope of some delayed imaginary future. Um, so sort of be present in the moment and enjoy what you have. Um, it talks about overwhelm and not uh, resisting the urge to clear out all the unimportant tasks first. You know, no, you should be making way for the important stuff first. And it's 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 just a great book for mindset and life and, and that's the way i've moved in my books and my podcasts into growth mindset and and uh, this kind of direction so i find that brilliant four thousand hours I think it is. no four thousand weeks sorry um the yeah give it give it a go it's got it's got well, it had great reviews on amazon that's why i i looked into it um that's a good it's a good one that there's the rules of living well by richard templar that's kind of the opposite where you can just dive in and out. You can pick a page and it, and it's like a rule for the life, you know, um, again, a mindset kind of living well, doing the right things in life, standing up for what you believe and, and things like this. It's, it helps you live a rounded life. I really like that one. Um, the, the, the final one is a non kind of mindset one. It's, it's true story. It's called into thin air by John Krakow. It's, um, I actually found that book by one of his others called Into the Wild, which I really enjoyed. And it's about, uh, it's a true story about tragedy on Everest, basically. The author was part of an expedition that uh, set off for the summit late. And they got caught in a bad storm. And um, it, it's a real page turner, really. Um, I, I'll not give away anything in case anyone's not read it. But they, they, they actually uh, did a film on it as well. They did a film based on his book called Everest. So. Uh, definitely worth a read if you've not read that one. Brilliant. Got any more? <laughs> Probably. I've got a bookcase over here <laughs> back with about a thousand books. No, that's great. No, that's brilliant. I uh, I haven't read any of those. So, and that, that's the reason I love doing this because all of a sudden it's just like, right, I'll get on Amazon after this and I'll start ordering all of these books. Uh, but I, I like that 4,000 week. Uh, yeah, 4,000 week. That sounds really, really good. So I think that'll be my, my next read after my Elon Musk marathon session that i'm going to read over christmas amazing cool 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 so um if anybody uh, 
you know, is sat on the fence thinking of getting into service accommodation, wanting to get into, um, you know, building their own business, what would you say to them? There's nothing stopping you doing this, okay? You don't need any more qualifications or knowledge than anyone else. Just get the training done, execute, execute the training, and you're halfway there, okay? It's as simple as that. So, yeah, definitely recommend getting the education and then forcing yourself to take the action. You've got to take the action. Brilliant. No, thank you for that. And, and have you got any final thoughts that you'd like to leave our uh, listeners with or our watchers, depending on how they're listening or watching this, before uh, before we wrap this one up? I keep listening to Mark's podcast. I love it. Um, yeah, I, I'd say just um, you got, you're going to this this property uh, business is all ups and downs. OK, like the the key is to not taking a bad day to heart. OK, so we're going to have that days where something falls out of bed, a deal doesn't happen or you had to make a tough call, or a bad decision, something went wrong. Just wipe the slate clean and go again the next day. If you can do that, you, you're basically destined for success. There's no two ways about it. Don't let a bad day uh, upset uh, upset the apple cart, basically. Just crack on. Keep going. No problems, only solutions, as uh, Dan Hill says. Yeah. So uh, brilliant, brilliant, Matt. Well, I'd like to thank you ever so much for coming on. Uh, as okay. I say with all the guests that I enjoy and I like speaking to, and if I've ever forgot to say it to a guest as well, I always reach out to them afterwards. But it'd be great to get you on in the future, potentially next year, see how things are progressing, seeing what you're up to, if you're up for that. 100%, definitely. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, you've broken your duck now. You, you've done yeah. your first podcast episode and it's been a good one. So, yes, thank you ever so much for coming on. Thank you for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure, Mark. Thank you. Brilliant stuff. So if you've enjoyed today, please feel free to follow, like, subscribe, share it with somebody that maybe needs to hear this. Uh, do feel free to reach out to me on social media. If you have any problems, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of those things. I'm the one with the blue tick. So, um, you know, it's me. And of course, do check out thepropertyunleashed.com for further training, support and help if you need it. But make sure if nothing else, you have a vision. You know what it is that you want to achieve. You know what it is that you want to be doing. Yeah, you break that vision down into a goal. You have a goal and an objective over the 12 months. You break that goal down into bite-sized chunks and you make sure that you take action on those. As Matt was saying, each and every day, move yourself forward, be a better version of yourself year on year, and you will start to build the companies, the businesses, and the life that you desire. Thank you very much for joining us here today. You take care and bye for now.